Good morning. Good morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, I greet you. I welcome you to the service of worship. We gather as God's people here in the building at St. James and in our online service to be the people of God and to worship and praise. For those who are present in the building, please be seated. This time I would draw your attention to the life and work of our church, which is found printed in our order of service in the announcements. A warm welcome to all who are joining us for worship this day. I know we have a number of uh, new folks here in the congregation with us in the building, and I know each week we do get new folks joining us in the online service, and it's a pleasure to know that everyone is worshiping with us this day. Uh, we want to extend our congratulations and best wishes uh, to those who received degrees and diplomas at St. FX Fall Convocation uh, yesterday. Uh, we certainly do pray for God's blessing on all of the future plans for the graduates. Uh, Connections is still looking for information and there's uh, notice there in the bulletin uh, about what Brenda Rose is looking at and in terms of uh, the information that you can pass along to her. Um, I know a number of you have uh, ordered fund script cards. They were unfortunately delayed, didn't come in yesterday or Friday like they were supposed to. They are expected in tomorrow uh, and Patsy will give you a call. So if you've ordered fund script car cards, uh, Patsy will give you a call tomorrow uh, when they arrive. Uh, turn your attention to, well, first I should say, uh, thanks to those who decorated the sanctuary yesterday. The sanctuary looks very festive. It's amazing how Whenever you decide to put up your Christmas decorations, it snows. Um, the delay till February is now the advice. Although I was going to add, there's an addendum to that, which is as soon as you want to put out your outside decorations, the temperature drops to minus 15. Uh, it seems to be the way that it goes. Uh, so certainly thanks to those decorations, which are enhance our service of worship this day. Uh, it is a number of weeks before we hit Christmas Eve itself, but we do have those services starting to firm up. There'll be the uh, 7 and 9 service here at St. James and a 4 o'clock service down at St. David's. As well, there will be an online service after our 7 o'clock service. Uh, so for those who are going to join us in that format, it will be available Christmas Eve as well. Why don't we take a moment and prepare ourselves for worship? Please join with me in our printed call to worship. Rejoice, peoples of the earth. And I shall make my dwelling among you. Our opening hymn is number 18 in Voices United. There's a voice in the wilderness calling. I'd invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together.
Please be seated. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. God of promise, draw us close in this time of worship. Speak your word of hope and calm our fears and worries. Tell us of your peace and help us to share your vision for the earth. Open our hearts and minds and allow us to experience again your promise of salvation. For we have gathered as your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm sure like you have noticed that it gets dark so early. And especially before the snow arrived, when it got dark, it was just you couldn't see anything. You couldn't find your way. You didn't know where anything was. And the fact of the matter is, through Advent, we light these candles to remind us of what God offers to us through Jesus Christ. We light the candle this day to remind us that we get easily distracted by the darkness of force and power, and we often choose strife and dis turmoil to solve our problems. But we gather in faith this day to remember that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Let's join together in our prayer. Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace, shine in our lives and show us your way of everlasting peace. Amen. And I'm going to invite our candle lighter to light two of our candles today. Well, there's snow on the ground, and there's decorations, and we're into December. So, is anybody getting excited about Christmas yet? I see lots of hands, which is wonderful. And there's something that usually happens this time of year that people talk about. It's how people, they, their attitudes seem to change. They look at the world differently. Does anyone know what that's called? What's it called, Temperance? It, it, we're in Advent. But there's this kind of, I'm going to say even a spirit that goes around and people start to pick it up this time of year. Anybody know? The Christmas spirit, that's right. And can anybody tell me anything about the Christmas spirit? Is it that you just want to wear red and green? No. no. What's it about? You're nice to people, aren't you? And you're generous and you're kind and you're patient. And you start to think about what you can give to other people to make their lives better. And that's the Christmas spirit that sometimes starts to show up this time of year. And certainly the decorations and everything else help us remind us of that spirit. And do you know something I hear all the time? I wish the Christmas spirit could last all year. Yeah. And you know what? I got a different name for the Christmas spirit. And do you know what that name is? the Christian spirit. Because the truth is, all those things we talked about, being patient, being kind, being generous, are all the things that God calls us to do. All the things that Jesus taught and showed in his life and the way we're supposed to live. 
So I'm going to invite everyone this year, when you're feeling that Christmas spirit, to think about how you can live that way all the days of the year. Why don't we join our hearts together and pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I'm going to invite those who are heading off to children's worship to do so now. Our responsive reading for this day uh, isn't actually a psalm. It's from the Gospel of Luke, the Song of Zechariah, which is found on page 900 of our Voices United. Blessed be the God of Israel, who has raised up for us a mighty Savior, through the holy prophets of old, God promised to save us from our enemies, to show the mercy promised to our ancestors. to set us free from the hands of our enemies. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. First lesson comes from the book of the prophet Malachi, reading in the third chapter. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he first appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. And from the letter to the Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in imprisonment and in defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that on the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, 
having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. And from the Gospel of Jesus according to Luke. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Ituria and Trachondius, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And John went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. May God bless to us a further understanding of these words, and to the name of God be eternal glory and honor and praise. Amen. Stay the blazes home. I was watching the press conference early on in the pandemic when Stephen McNeil said those words to us. It was a confusing time because we didn't really know much about COVID other than it was serious. It was an anxious time because we saw the effect of the virus and we didn't know how to protect ourselves. And the four words spoken by the Premier that day, stay the blazes home, made us stop 
and pay attention. They weren't carefully crafted, they weren't the most polite, but they were certainly clear, and they got everyone's attention. This morning's Gospel reading starts the story of John the Baptist. But before we get to the specifics of his message, which is next week's reading, the Gospel writer gives us a list of people and their titles. And while that may just seem like a preamble, the truth is that those words are very deliberate and they do something important. They anchor the message which follows. Now, the list of names may not mean much to us, but to the first listeners of the Gospel, they would have known those people and the positions they held in the world. If you like, it's the same as me saying that this sermon is preached in the fourth wave of the pandemic. When Justin Trudeau is Prime Minister of Canada, when Tim Houston is Premier of Nova Scotia, and Peter Smith is the Minister at St. James. Because what Luke tells us in the opening of this passage is that well into the reign of Tiberius, who becomes more and more unstable and violent as he rules, when the grip of Rome was strong on the people through Pilate the governor, when those who had made compromises with Rome like Herod and Philip ruled their puppet kingdoms, and when two priests who were struggling to continue on in faith and balance the needs of the people and keeping their conquerors happy, in those days, John the Baptist shows up. And the Gospel tells us two things right off the bat about John. That he wanders all through the area, going from place to place, which means that he's being talked about in large population centers, in homes, and in small towns and villages. And that as he travels, he proclaims a baptism for the repentance of sins. In other words, the message to the people is that they need to change, they need a different life, they need to turn back to God. Because we just heard who's in power at the time. And because of that list, we know that everyone is afraid and doing everything they can to try and stop the world and their lives from falling apart. The emperor is jealous, he's paranoid, and he's violent. The governor is afraid of drawing any attention of the emperor. The puppet kings are trying not to be noticed by the governor. The priests are caught in the middle trying to keep the people and the occupiers from coming to blows. And John arrives in the middle of all of that, saying things need to change and everyone needs to turn back to God. And then the Gospel takes a sharp turn, and we get a quotation from the prophet Isaiah declaring how the messenger will come and announce that the salvation of God is at hand. A salvation which won't be stopped by anything in this world because everything will give way before God. For the way will be clear for any and all to experience and know the promise of God for their lives. Which means that the message John brings is a powerful and life-changing promise. For into our lives, into our world, there is a salvation, a change which is coming which cannot be stopped. That God knows our pain, our sorrow, our fears, our troubles, and that God is doing what needs to be done for us to live new lives and for our world to be transformed. And I don't know about you, but I need that promise to become a reality for me now. Because there are things happening which I can't change in my own, and I need God. I need strength when I'm weak, calm when things are chaotic, and wisdom when I have no idea what to do next. I need God to reach into our world with a grace which cannot be denied, and a wisdom which shows the way forward. For salvation is not about us doing nothing and God doing everything, but about us being faithful and doing our best and God doing what we cannot do for ourselves. Because let's be honest, COVID's still around. We're still unsure of what lies ahead. And we have all of the personal and family and work problems we had before the pandemic and those which happened during the pandemic, all of which is worse because of the pandemic. So the message that God is moving heaven and earth to get to us with a peace 
a peace that will hold us through our troubles and through these tiring days is welcome and it's life-changing. Because the way is being cleared for us to get from this day and everything it holds to the better day, the better life, which we talked about last week. The salvation we need is at hand, even though the world is still so unsettled and our lives so uncertain. For the good news is we can experience that salvation, we can know that peace in our lives. And to welcome that peace and embrace that peace, we have to repent. And I want to be clear about what I mean when I say we have to repent. It's not that you're so wicked a person that God can't get to you. No. That's not the gospel message. The gospel message is that God loves you and is coming with salvation for you, and you need to turn toward God to know and experience what's happening. For repentance is about turning away from evil, but perhaps more importantly, repentance is about turning toward God. Because the salvation is coming, the promise is happening, the peace can be yours, but if your eyes are closed, you're not going to see it. If your ears are shut, you're not going to hear it. And if your heart is closed, how will you receive it? So turn back to God. Let the promise of Jesus echo in your life. Let the words we say and sing become part of how you look at the world and discover the hope and the peace which God is bringing about at this time and in this place. Because right here and right now, and this is a message for those of us who are in this building and those who are in the online service at home, God is at work and God is bringing about a new life for you and for our world through Jesus Christ. And through Jesus, we are called to turn our lives around and be part of what God is doing in this world as we ride out the fourth wave of this pandemic and find our way forward together. Because this promise, this peace, this salvation of God is not something for another place and another time, but it's for you, for me, for us, right here and right now so that your eyes are open to what God is placing in front of you, so that you know with every fiber of your being that you are beloved and precious to God, so that you experience the stirring of the Holy Spirit, which causes your words and actions to bless and change the lives of the people around you. Let's join our voices together in hymn number 48 in Voices United, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Please be seated. Let us gather everything we hold in our hearts. Let us pray. Gracious God, who sent Jesus Christ to be among us, the Christ whom we especially honor during this Advent season as the Prince of Peace, we pray today for all who are seeking a measure of peace in their lives. We pray for those who are seeking peace with other people, who perhaps have found it difficult to get along, who are at odds with family members or neighbors or schoolmates, who are trying hard to control their tongue in difficult circumstances, who need you to help them find the way of peace. We pray for those who are yearning for peace with themselves, who are haunted by memories and guilt from the past, who are anxious and restless, who cannot think positively at all about themselves, those who need you to show them the way of peace. We pray for those who are yearning for the assurance of peace with you, who are haunted by what they have done before, who are aware of an empty place in their hearts, who wish to experience the assurance of salvation, those who need you to bless them with peace in their lives. Gracious God, who calls us to be peacemakers, we pray this day for those who are working and striving for peace in our world. We pray for community workers and those with relief organizations striving to bring a measure of healing and peace into the lives and areas torn by disease, by poverty, and by disaster. We pray for all everywhere who seek to shine the light of peace and hope into the shadow of despair and hopelessness. As we pray in the silence of this church, we hold up those words, those works, and strive as individuals and as a community to bring this world closer to the peace that you want for all of us. Hear our prayers, we pray. God, who calls us to share the peace of Christ with others, let our words bring people together, let our actions bring a better tomorrow, and let your Holy Spirit work within us so that your will is indeed done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Our hymn number 64 in Voices United, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
as you go out into the day and the week ahead, remember God's promises, remember God's grace, remember the salvation which is yours through Jesus Christ, and go with the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit this day and all of your days. Amen. Thank you.